Shalom, everyone. This is Chris Shoemaker, also known as Yehuda Ben Shomer. And uh, today I want to uh, give a message regarding Sukkot. Now, the subject matter may seem very far removed from the Feast of Tabernacles, and you're thinking, how in the world does this relate to Sukkot at all? Because I'm going to be talking about the temple tax. Now, in Exodus chapter 30, verses 11 through 16, and I'm going to have these scripture passages uh, be homework for you for the sake of time, but in Exodus chapter 30, verses 11 through 16, as well as Exodus chapter um, 28, uh, verses 26, or 24 through 26, it talks about um, taking a census, taking a census of, a census of Israel of all the males 20 years old and above and that these 20 year old and above males are required to give a half shekel to the temple uh this is used in um uh the repairs and upkeep of the tabernacle and temple and it's also compensation uh for some of the sacrifices uh you know the daily offerings that are given uh, on the altar, you know, the, the morning and the evening sacrifices, etc. Uh, so it compensates for some of that. Uh, so it's the census and the half shekel temple tax for the service of the tabernacle slash temple. Now in Second Kings chapter 12, verses 4 through 17, as well as Second Chronicles 24, 6 through 9, it talks about um, – the temple needing repair and that they're taking voluntary donations as well as using the census ransom temple tax money uh, to repair the temple. Now, in Nehemiah chapter 10, verses 32 through 33, uh, it's a third of a shekel for the temple repair. Uh, and this is different from the uh, half shekel ransom uh, census money used to repair the temple. So this was kind of like uh, an extra donation uh, given to the temple for repairs and upkeep in Nehemiah chapter 10. So these are the passages that deal with um, the temple tax and money being used to uh, for supplies to repair and rebuild the tabernacle and or temple, whichever is appropriate, whichever uh, context and passage we're dealing with. Uh, so now we come to Matthew chapter 17 and Yeshua's encounter regarding the temple tax. Now, I need to point out that the beginning of chapter 17 is the uh, episode on Mount Hermon otherwise known as the Mount of Transfiguration, where Yeshua, Peter, James, and John go up to Mount Hermon. And Mount Hermon was a very foreboding mountain. It was considered the mountain of the gods. In other words, the mountain of the watchers, the mountain that the B'nai Elohim, the sons of Elohim, the sons of God, who rebelled against God and fell to earth from heaven, where they set up their headquarters and their Mount Olympus, so to speak. And so it was enemy territory. So Yeshua went up to uh, the Mount of Transfiguration during the Feast of Tabernacles, during Sukkot, and was transfigured before the very eyes of the three inner circle disciples. And appearing with him during this episode was Moses and Elijah, representing the Torah and the prophets. And it says that his clothes became gleaming white and he shone that he his 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 appearance was transfigured that he he shone that he shined now the watchers or the fallen sons of god the bene elohim were also called the shining ones because that was a characteristic and moses was one of the shining ones because he too was transfigured before the presence of the lord on mount sinai for uh two 40 day and night periods equaling 80 days he was in the presence of god face to face and he he radiated light and he shone when he came down from the mountain so much so they had to put a veil over him um so as not to make the people afraid and people wouldn't be blinded or distracted by the light that was radiating from moses so yeshua was basically saying you know what this is you this is the uh mountain of the lowercase g the lower the lowercase gods the fallen sons of god the the b'nai elohim the watchers the shining ones 
and I'm staking claim that I'm taking this back. Uh, this is no longer going to be your mountain. Uh, your time is up. Uh, your, your days are numbered, and you all are going to, at some point in time in the near future, going to be bound uh, in the abyss, and your time's over. So we're kind of getting a little bit off subject here, but just trying to give you a little backdrop information regarding our subject matter. So that's at the beginning of, of um, Matthew 17. So here at the end of Matthew 17, still during the Feast of Tabernacles, still during Sukkot, because the annual temple tax was taken during the Feast of Tabernacles, during Sukkot. Now, there were three pilgrimage festivals where in Exodus 23, 15 and 34, 20, it says, do not appear before the Lord empty handed. That being Passover, Pentecost, and the Feast of Tabernacles. Uh, so, uh, in, in, in each case, you had to bring a sacrifice, and in the Feast of Tabernacles, you also had to bring the half, sh uh, half shekel for the temple tax. Um, also, I'd like to remind you, well, I'll, I'll get to that a little bit later. So, um, it says, I'll just go ahead and read from the NIV, it says in verse 24, And Yeshua and his disciples arrived in Capernaum. So disciples, plural, remember that, more than one, even though we're only dealing with one disciple in this account, which is Peter. So it says, after Yeshua and his disciples arrived in Capernaum, the collectors of the two drachma tax, which the two drachma was the half shekel uh, temple tax, came to Peter and asked, uh, does your teacher pay the temple tax? Now, why do you think that they asked that? Several reasons. I think rumors were already spreading uh, where people were saying, man, this cat said that he was going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, not knowing that he was talking about the temple of his body uh, himself, thinking that it was the literal temple. They were thinking, okay, these are anti-temple sentiments. Uh, these are against our religion. These are blasphemous words and thoughts. So they maybe they were, they were trying to, to um, um, trap Yeshua by asking Peter this. And so Yeshua just says, oh yeah, yes he does, he replied. And when Peter came into the house, Yeshua was the first to speak. What do you think, Simon? He asked. From where do the kings of the earth collect duty and taxes? From their own sons or from others? Uh, from others, Peter answers. Then the sons are exempt, Yeshua said to him. But so as so that we may not offend them, go to the lake, throw out your line, and take the first fish you catch, open its mouth, and you will find a four drachma coin, in other words, a, a one shekel coin. Take it and give it to them for my tax and yours. This is one of the passages that are often used by antinomian, anti-Torah uh, believers that say, see, Yeshua did away Yeshua did away with with um, uh, you know the the law. He did away with the law of Moses. He did away with the the temple and with the sacrifices. He did away with all of these things. So of course he's not going to pay the temple tax. But that's not what Yeshua was saying here. This is not what was being said at all, and what Yeshua was meaning. So remember on the Mount of Transfiguration, by Yeshua being transfigured, he was. Uh, proclaiming himself as the Son of God, as a shining one, as the Messiah, as God's Son. Might I also remind you that since Peter is one of the main guys in the story, there was a point in time where um, Yeshua says, well, who do men say that I am? And some said, oh, well, some say you're John the Baptist, some say you're Elijah, some say you're one of the other prophets. And then he says, well, who do you think I am? Who do you say that I am? And Peter said, well, you're the, you're the Messiah. You're the Son of God. He says, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but it came directly from God. So Peter had this revelation from God that Yeshua was the Son of God, the Messiah. So here on the Mount of Transfiguration, he proclaims himself as the Son of God. Peter himself proclaims Yeshua as the Son of God. So by two or three witnesses, let everything be established. And they weren't the only witnesses, but God himself said, This is my Son in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Not only that, but uh, Moses and Elijah were there to back up the claim that he was the Son of God. So, you know, here he says, um, when Peter was asked, does your master pay the temple tax? Does your rabbi? 
pay the temple tax? He's like, well, yeah, sure he does. And then Yeshua says, well, what do you think, Simon? You know, where uh, where do the kings of the earth collect taxes from, from their sons or from others? And Peter's like, well, from others. Definitely not from the sons. And Yeshua's like, well, the sons are exempt then. And so what he was saying, he's like, I'm the son of God. I don't have to pay the temple tax. Just the same way that Yeshua didn't have to be baptized by John the Baptist. He was the son of God. He was God in the flesh. He didn't have to. But so as to fulfill prophecy and to be an example to the rest of us humans and to mankind, he was baptized. He paid the temple tax. In other words, he never broke Torah. He kept the Torah. He says, just, um, I'm exempt, but be, so that we won't offend them, um, you know, we're going to pay the temple tax, and this is how we're going to do it. Go fishing. The first fish you catch, you're going to find a shekel, um, a four drachma coin. And, you know, that'll be a half shekel for you and a half shekel for me, and so pay the temple tax for both of us. So I think that is, that you know, that is pretty am amazing. And, of course, this happened during the Feast of Tabernacles. So this is kind of an unorthodox message for Sukkot, for the Feast of Tabernacles. But I thought it was rarely, if ever, taught on, and I wanted just to bring this out because I thought it would be very edifying to you um, in this regard. Uh, so I um, also want to point out that um, – it says at the beginning of this passage in verse 24 of this account, it says that Jesus and his disciples, plural, arrived in Capernaum. Um, and then immediately, there's no period, it's a comma. It says the collectors of the two drachma taxes came to Peter and asked. So I'm assuming that the rest of the disciples were there. Even though they're not mentioned specifically by name, by the construction of that sentence and the disciples are plural, they were there. I'm assuming they were there. So. How come the other disciples didn't pay the, the half-shekel temple tax? They were all men. Weren't they obligated to pay the tax too? They would be if they were 20 years and above. So it is speculated, and it is possible that this is saying that Yeshua, who was around 30 years old at the time, and Peter were both 20 years and above. Therefore, they were obligated to pay the half-shekel temple tax. And he only, he only tells Peter, catch a fish and you'll get a shekel coin, half for you, half for me, we can pay the temple tax. He, he doesn't worry about the rest of the disciples. How come, they didn't, how, didn't he, how come he didn't provide the temple tax for them or say that they had to pay it? Because likely they were either – they were 19 years old and under. I was blown away by this revelation. But it was very, 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 very common that disciples of any rabbi of that day and age, they became disciples around the age of 15. And so it was, it, it was common for, for them to have young adults or teenagers as disciples. It was kind of out of the ordinary for a rabbi to take on an older student. And so, you know, in, in normal circumstances, Peter wouldn't have been a disciple of any rabbi. He was too old. But Yeshua took him as a disciple. So I think this is, this is very interesting. Very interesting indeed. Guys, thanks so much for uh, listening. And I uh, hope you guys have a great Feast of Tabernacles, Kag Sameach Sukkot, uh, Shalom, and Shavuot Tov. Abrahamsdescendants.com, getting back to the first century in a 21st century way. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. And don't forget to check out and subscribe to our social media accounts on Instagram at AD underscore international, on Facebook at Abraham's Descendants International, on Twitter at ADINT Ministries, and on Blogger at Ray Bash's Ramblings. And don't forget to check out and bookmark our website, abrahamsdescendants.com. Shalom.